I think that is such a loser mentality, homie. Hey everyone, welcome to Degon vs. Competitors episode 13 of Face Check. It's hard to remember because we've been pumping out so many and it's been a long LCS season. It's the one where the mid-season showdown is over, Cloud9 is winner, Team Liquid fell just a little bit short, and uh, TSM was there. Maybe you forgot. No worries, we had you covered in this episode of Face Check, so let's break down what you all had questions about. First up, Joshua Rogers says, I'm gonna be honest, I casually watch LCK, and when I saw DK this year, I didn't realize they were DWG until LS said they were Damn One on stream. That's right, Damn One Gaming, DWG, like God, that is such a fantastic acronym. Got, I guess, sponsorship dollars by Kia? And so uh, now when they say, yeah, that key in the back, it's actually pretty good. It's an actual world champion there. And uh, apparently LS said that they had a sponsorship deal in place before the championship last year. And now uh, Damwon Gaming was able to cash on in and get even more money, I assume, from Kia because they're the world champion. So uh, congrats to DWG, but unfortunately they have to change their name to DK now. Next up, Anthony Tyre says, props to LS for actually being built different, viewing all leagues globally and being able to speak on and analyze all of them at the same time. Insane. Well, when all the leagues are actually crap, like LS has been referring to, you're actually just kind of giving the same story over and over again, which is why he's getting frustrated and I feel for him because he does watch all the leagues. He does have uh, so much knowledge to give and when you see those mistakes over and over again as he's hit on in our show, it does get uh, a little tiresome. So I'm not gonna make LS do something that he doesn't wanna do. I don't wanna make him fake happiness or anything that he said. So we'll see where it goes here in the future for Face Check. We've got several comments about the Sun situation. Sherrick says, in traditional sports, they account for the Sun's position when they design stadiums. Patrick Overstreet says, LCS fans, we want better quality gameplay so we can compete internationally. LCS. Here we have them outside with the heat and glares on their monitors. All right, so uh, I kind of want to tackle this one because it's become more and more of a talking point since the end, uh, especially because Sven came out in his uh, post-match interview and talked about the issues and difficulties, calling it a failed experiment. Those are very strong words, and I know that uh, the riot apologist in me is going to come out a little bit, but the LCS team thinks about this and has teams that put these shows together. So, unfortunately, they're not able to build the stadium per se, which is probably why they were up in the club seats compared to being down on stage where the casters were, right? It, it was a flipped thing. Most of the time, the casters are in the uh, up in the, the box rooms or somewhere off stage, and then on stage are the uh, players because they're the spectacle. So you can't necessarily build a stadium for that, but you can try to adjust around it. And some of the issues that they had were not only the sun in their eyes or you know somewhere around where there was a little bit of glare, but also cold. Sven was talking about how they had to use hand warmers to stay warm. So I think that one is an oversight, but you have to wonder if here in LA, where there are a little bit more stricter COVID restrictions rather than across the world in other leagues, we've seen teams back in studio, you kind of wonder if they needed to have an outdoor facility, which seems to be a hot word for uh, the, the quarantine to, to allow people to have events. In this one, with the sun coming on in, the wind blowing in different directions, you're only able to control so many variables. And we've seen what it's like to have a finals at home when Cloud9 won it over FlyQuest. Like that felt a little different. It, it, it felt like it wasn't as great of a celebration as it could have been. Like, if we didn't have the Greek theater, you wouldn't have had Sven leaving his teammates, running down there to go grab the trophy on stage with perks falling right behind him. That moment would have never happened, right? It would be another like, yeah, we did it. We're, we're in the Cloud9 house. Okay, let's hug, right? You had that moment there. So you are able to build it. Plus, you did have a pretty epic show overall. You had uh, the guys on stage. You had Pentakill show up. You had the deer moment as well. So I think there's a lot of different things that were pros and cons, and I'm glad that at least uh, the players that were most affected by the competitive integrity things uh, were able to come out on top anyways, as well as having this be a fantastic learning lesson moving forward, right? You always talk about how much of a spectacle do you want compared to competitive integrity, but then you don't want the guys to just be at home. You don't want them to be just in a box. 
Well, here, they tried being a little bit more liberal on that other side, and this time, you know, it, it could have gone worse. It didn't. We had an epic game five, you know, five game series showdown, and uh, it was the first one. So they're gonna refine it here as we move into the new world and close the chapter on COVID. XD says, BT Dubs, I just subscribed because the outro, smiley, 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 I probably would have never subscribed if it wasn't for that because I just forget, or I think it's no big deal. Hmm. That's right, scriptwriter. This is a good spot for a subscribe. You should subscribe. How about your homie? Homies. All of us. Thanks. All right, we're not going completely from just face check this episode this week. So y'all had a lot to say about our video on Cloud9's chances at the mid-season invitational. So let's dig into some of those. First up, Daydreamin', fantastic support player that formerly played for, it's Coast. I'm gonna go with Coast. All right, yeah, Daydreamin', yeah, anyway, you can look it up in Wikipedia. Three wildcard regions versus Damwon in Group C, smiley face. All right, now I know that's not daydreaming because that obviously is an EU fan talking smack about the LCS. Get out of here with that one. Yes, we're a tier two T or a tier pot two, whatever. We're still a major region. We haven't lost that moniker yet. We're gonna be fine. Wait till we make it out of groups here at MSI where they're gonna bump us back up to a tier one region. Next up, Alexander Sue says, the expectation should be clear second. I think going one and one and maybe losing a tie break would still be decently above average showing versus Damwon Kia. I'm interested to see all the matchups, especially top versus jungle. Fudge is probably still the weakest link, but they clearly showed in the final they can plan effectively and play around him to help him out. But Khan's lane pressure is pretty different from Alfard's. Now, uh, I don't know. We talked about it and, and, and on the episode about the champ pool of top jungle and mid being pretty open to, to trying new things and actually thought that maybe the bot lane would be less willing to try new things. And if anything, it might be just Vulcan, right? Because I think if you ask Sven to play anything, he'll go ahead and play on it. Um, he's always had a big pool. So I think matchups are gonna be a big thing. I think kind of pointing out Fudge as a guy that won't do something isn't the right answer. I think out of almost all players in the LCS, Fudge has to be number one or number two in terms of growth, right? Whether it was like, hey, at play, champ pool, style. Fudge has been adaptable since the uh, lock-in tournament. So I think focusing there uh, isn't the, the play. I'm excited to see our best versus their best. All right, let's see Perks up against everyone else in the group and make sure he dominates uh, against the other smaller region teams in Group C. Next up, Black Ecology says, MSI needs to be expanded to two teams per major region minimum. It's such a budget exhibition tournament format. This sport gets two international events that matter a year and one of them is basically a joke. Not enough international play equals slog skill evolution. Uh, I don't know if I agree with that. I think there's something to the fact that, hey, this is supposed to be special. This is supposed to be a momentous occasion. And uh, as what we talked about on the show, you're supposed to go to MSI, get practice with the best, learn from those other regions and bring it back to your region and make it better. Now for multiple years, that hasn't happened in the LCS. The representative that went to MSI has come back and then had to readjust to the LCS and struggled all the way back to CLG back in 2016. Uh, when they, you know, with Kobe's fall, uh, Kobe's call of, I never doubted them! I oh, never oh, doubted them! I never doubted them! It was great. Everyone's like, great, CLG's gonna come back and dominate. And then they came back and like struggled. So I think there's something to be said about it still being important spectacle. Like we still need to get better at getting good and translating that back to the LCS before we start sending two teams. Yes, it would be great to send multiple teams uh, from the other regions, but it is a logistical nightmare to get, let alone let, just the teams that we already have, right? If you're trying to get even more teams in there, I think it's difficult. I like this yeah. new format change. They've shown that they're willing to make changes at MSI to make it make sense and, and, and get more games in. You, if you make it out of the group stage, you play more games than you would if you had four groups of three. So I, I, I like the fact that this is their experimental grounds and maybe, maybe they'll make more of a uh, change in the format and how many teams they request in the future. But I think this is just like, hey, 
Can we put it on an event uh, this year? Can we make it feel special? And can we get a teaser into what Worlds is gonna look like? Yes, yes, and yes. How do we do that efficiently? Bam, here's your answer. Okay, that's enough of me and only me. Let's get back to the face check comments. Sammy says, Perks smurfed game five so hard, it was glorious. Um, yeah, I mean, the champ pool, the play style, he lived up to the bill. And I remember at the very beginning, my boy definitely took him on one-on-one -on -one with the Kaisa, started talking the smack, and he's like, hello, Umajan, welcome to NA. Well, it's more like, hey, NA, welcome to Umajan. Uh, that was a pretty sick performance by Perks, and uh, it has been really cool to get to watch him week in and week out. Let's take just one comment about EU. Checkmade734 says, if I was a player on Mad Lions, I would actually be scared of going to MSI playing at the level they are at currently. If they get embarrassed again, like they did in play-ins, it's more than likely that one or two of the players will be on the chopping block again, and the narrative will be set up that no one would want to see them at Worlds, so I hope for their sake that they play well. All right, I think that is such a loser mentality, homie. Like, they just went through the gauntlet. They won their winner side match against G2, the third ever team to beat G2 in a best of five series. And yes, a little bit different G2, no perks there. But still, you're, you're fighting some of the best teams, uh, some of the best players in all of Europe. And then they showed the resilience the resilience to come back against Rogue. Yes, uh, it, it took a couple of throws and, and not the greatest performance from Larson, uh, Trimby having those rookie nerves, but I, what more do you need to see from this team when they were dominant when they needed to be dominant and when they had slip ups because their opponent was playing well, they were able to make the adaptations necessary to come back. So I think you gotta give them a little bit more credit here. Plus, El Yoya is a rookie. Why would you make more swaps when your team is young right now? I think give them a little bit more time. A little bit more time. They knew who they wanted to build around, which was Umanoid in the mid lane. So then they made their swaps. They go get Armut, they go get Oyoya, and you're good to go. Like, give it some patience, y'all. Especially for a winning team. I think when you're on a losing team, when you're all the way on the bottom, yes, make those wholesale changes. Start swapping things out. But if your team is like, the best. Give it some time to grow unless there's some internal strife or conflict like who you want to play mid lane, caps and perks. And now more selfishly, I love to get compliments from y'all. Sasora so says, not gonna lie, I had a bad impression at first, but the more I watch this show, the more I understand how important it is to have Vegan and not just LS and Dom. You know, I always kind of want to be the bridge of storytelling. And I think if you're not willing to get in there and storytell with anybody, let alone some of the best experts in the game, then you're not doing, uh, a, uh, you know, you're not doing the, the storytelling or, you know, your job justice. If you don't want to go out there and try to be the best. So uh, when we had the opportunity to make this show, it, 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 it was a little scary, you know, it takes a little while to figure it out. And then when we picked up LS, I was like, you know, I've known LS a little bit. You know, I met him over in North America when he was out here, uh, coaching for Tempo Storm, watched his stuff just like everybody else. And here we are, you just gotta be able to find how you can get people to tell their stories. And so the more that we've done this, there's been a lot of nice comments about me and I very much am humbled and appreciate it. So thank you everyone, but I'm just glad that you support the show and support the three of us. Those are the comments for this week, but on next week's episode, we're gonna break down the LCK and LPL finals, give you a little bit of a preview, then take a break the week after that, and then the week after that, so three weeks from now, we're gonna give you a full MSI preview of all the groups, so I'll get into the nitty gritty of all those minor regions that you know me to know, and then, We'll get all the coverage for MSI right here on Ben Esports. Make sure to hit subscribe. Thanks, y'all.